you can become an aircraft owner. Now, if you think that's crazy, I'm going to show you in this video, as well as my upcoming videos, on how it's completely possible. Follow me as I promote general aviation, inspire others to get involved with flying, and capture moments that can only be seen from a bird's eye view. Come fly with me. Now, one question I get asked a lot, how much does it cost to fly from point A to point B, and how would it compare to a vehicle like a truck or a car? And that's what this video is about. So today's showdown, what burns less fuel on a trip from point A to point B? My 1979 Piper Tomahawk or my 2008 Chevy Avalanche? Now for a short disclaimer, my 2008 Chevy Avalanche had an issue when I purchased it uh, with a cylinder deactivation system. So this truck has a system that would drop the uh, engine from running on eight cylinders down to four on the highway. It's a system that's prone to failure uh, and will nickel and dime you to death if you own one of these things. So I actually put a Camaro camshaft and lifters in after I bought it. I took the top end of the engine apart, did all that work, had the engine computer and transmission computer reprogrammed. Uh, so this truck is V8 all the time. Uh, so I'm going to use the fuel mileage for this particular vehicle in my calculations. It's a little bit worse than factory, obviously, because it is V8 all the time, but uh, that's what I'm going to use in my comparison because this is my daily driver and what I drive every day. So the route I'm taking for this video will be a flight to Drumheller and back. Uh, now I'm planning on visiting a friend I haven't seen in a long time, and it's a perfect trip to take this Piper Tomahawk out and uh, stretch its legs a bit from when I finished the annual inspection. So it's a perfect shakedown cross-country flight. Okay, so I'm over at the uh, Petro Canada. It's the gas station that's closest to my house. So I'll show you what the current gas price is. And as you can see, the current price for 87 octane gasoline, it's a $1.59.9 uh, liter. So that's in Canadian funds. So that's the pricing that I'm going to use uh, for the calculations on what the truck burns. Now the thing with fuel gauges in small aircraft, they're not super accurate, not super reliable. So it's a pretty standard practice to dip the tanks before we fly. So what I've got here is a fuel dipstick where I've got the uh, basically gallons remaining uh, of usable fuel marked on this dipstick. So I'm gonna dip the tanks, see how much fuel we got. So I'm at seven and a half gallons on the left tank. And six and a half on the right tank. So that's more than enough to get to our destination with a healthy reserve. I've got an alternate route planned uh, just in case weather comes in, but I've checked the weather, I've checked the weather forecasts, I've checked the graphical area forecasts, I've checked the aviation weather, the civilian weather. Looks like we're gonna have a great day pretty much all day. Uh, but it's still something I'm going to keep an eye on, but we've got enough fuel to go and I've got my readings beforehand so we can figure out how much uh, we burned on this whole trip. So my pre-flight inspection is done. I'm going to tow the aircraft out on the flight line, kick the tires, light the fire and uh, get going and take off. I've got a VFR flight plan filed just in case uh, there's the requirement for search and rescue monitoring and away we go. Sit your derriere on Perrier. Enjoy the flight. So I'm all set up for cruise now. I'm at my cruise altitude. I've got my power set for just kind of an economy cruise. Uh, right now I'm doing 80 knots indicated, but because of the temperature and altitude I'm flying at, my true airspeed is uh, actually about 90 knots. Now I've got my mixture adjusted properly. Uh, one thing that these engines are prone for is lead fouling if you run them too rich. And so what I do is uh, kind of dial that back to protect the engine and protect my uh, spark plugs from getting fouled up. Now I do have my route programmed into a free app on this iPad here. I run uh, Flight Plan Go, so I've got a couple waypoints along the way. 
Uh, this route we're taking today pretty much takes us right in line with Brooks. So I've set Brooks for a waypoint as well. Now I use this iPad just kind of as a backup. What I do rely on though is these uh, navigation sheets that I filled out. So I've got my uh, departing destination up at the top and my various waypoints down at the bottom. Now these uh, little flight planner sheets are great to kind of work through them. You set your cruising altitude, you can input your uh, wind direction and speed as well as temperature and then using a uh, either the e6b manual flight calculator it's kind of like a slide rule or one of the newer flight computers out there you can uh, set kind of which uh, heading you need to fly to offset the wind you're going to be flying against as well as the difference between uh, true heading and magnetic heading as well as uh, the errors that are built into the compass that's unique to each aircraft uh, so with that all in mind, I've got the compass heading I should be flying at and uh, as well as the distance I've calculated between each waypoint and based on my cruising speed, what the uh, time to each waypoint is. So I track that as well as estimated fuel burn. So it's just part of some flight planning. Anything kind of out of the ordinary along the way, I'll be able to figure out if it's wind related or maybe if I haven't uh, set the right cruise speed. Uh, so in which case I can make adjustments from there. But look at that horizon. This is the beauty of flying over the Canadian prairies. It's definitely something to be grateful for. This is my morning gratitude right here is this view. So as you can see through this river valley, uh, it's a very ancient river valley. Uh, we're approaching the Canadian Badlands. So as we approach Drumheller, we'll be uh, having a nice view of the sedimentary rock in the uh, canyon as we approach Drumheller. Now Drumheller is famous for the Royal Terrell Museum. Uh, so if you like dinosaurs like uh, I do, it's a, it's a great thing to check out. But uh, yeah, enjoy the view. So we're approaching the, the city of Drumheller. Now take a look at this valley. You can see all the sedimentary rock here. I'm gonna try and zoom in. Look how awesome that looks. Such a unique landscape. Straight ahead is uh, Drumheller. So we'll be setting up to cross midfield and join left downwind for the runway in Drumheller. We'll be landing on runway 35. Uh, for a full stop landing. So I'm landed in Drumheller. 
uh, immediately greeted by a very gracious, friendly manager. Uh, I've heard a lot of great things about the Drumheller Airport, and so far definitely hasn't disappointed. Anyways, I'm going for breakfast with a friend I haven't seen for about eight years, and uh, thanks to General Aviation and this Piper Tomahawk, I was able to come up for a day trip and visit them. So I'll catch up with you after breakfast, and uh, I'll measure up the tanks, measure up how much fuel I've burned, and continue this uh, video. So I just finished having breakfast and visiting with my friend. It was great to catch up and uh, I'm thankful that this Piper Tomahawk was able to make such a long trip, uh, basically a half day trip. Uh, you know, they say small aircraft are a time machine and that's exactly what this is. So I took on full fuel and I filled up uh, approximately 22 gallons. Now when I left, I wasn't at full fuel. That 22 gallons wasn't just on this trip to get here. By my rough math, I burned about five and a half gallons or so. I'll get to the finer numbers at the end of the trip when I tally up everything and see how it compares to if I would have taken the truck. Uh, but at any rate, the aircraft is ready to go. I checked it over, checked the oil, uh, you know, did my pre-flight for this next ride back. I'm going to file my VFR flight plan next and then hit to the skies. I ended up taking a detour and went west instead of to the southeast. So I followed the Red Deer River west out of Drumheller to check out the Blario River Crossing. Now it's a river ferry that was commissioned in 1913 by Andre Blario. And one of the really cool things about this is the tie to aviation. So Andre's brother, Louis Blario, was the first person to build a successful monoplane that used a separate control stick and rudder system, basically like what I was flying over top of that ferry crossing that day. So Louis was also the first person to successfully cross the English Channel. So just kind of a cool tie, sort of that six degrees of separation to Southern Alberta. But at any rate, there is a tie to world famous aviation. Now once I was done checking out that river crossing, I ended up flying back to Drumheller. Now I did sort of a circle over top of the city just to check it out with a bird's eye view. As you can see from the video, just the whole area, very beautiful to see. Whether you're on the ground or in the air, Drumheller is definitely a place with a lot of different attractions to check out. I'm very happy to have taken my Piper Tomahawk to see it that day. So I'm at cruising altitude for heading uh, southeast. I'm at 7,500 feet, so 7,500 feet above sea level. And uh, I'm just kind of enjoying a snack and checking out this view. There's kind of this uh, haze on the horizon that looks really cool. Uh, anyways, I'm taking advantage of some upper winds that are kind of pushing me uh, a little bit to the south and kind of helping me out a bit. So it's nice to get a tailwind on the way home. It's just going to help on the uh, fuel mileage too. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see where it ends up. So I'll show you what I'm looking at. Uh, this is Lake Newell. It's uh, quite a large lake, and man, it's 7,500 feet in the air. It just looks beautiful. What a great day to be flying. 
Now as I started my descent to circuit altitude for Bow Island, I had this front row view to this beautiful site, uh, the South Saskatchewan River. Now the way the sun was shining, the way the clouds were, like it looked like a painting. The view is as wildly different in the air than it is on the ground. And it's just one of the one of the great things about general aviation and traveling with a small aircraft. So now I'm back at the hangar. I uh, put the plane back in. Now it's time to take uh, one last reading on the fuel tanks on each side, mark that down. And then when I go home, I can uh, do the math and see how much this trip used up. 9.5 gallons. 10 gallons left. So I got all the measurements and now I can go home, do the math and see how it compares cost wise, uh, traveling from Bow Island to Jerome Heller and back versus uh, what it would take to drive my truck. So I'm going to button up the plane and head home. And now we're ready for the breakdown comparison. So according to Google Maps, the quickest route by ground would be two hours and 37 minutes covering a distance of 258 kilometers each way. And now I've overlaid the flying route, which was roughly 203 kilometers. Now it was virtually a straight line from Bow Island to Drumheller, except for a short dog leg near Drumheller so that I could bypass a restricted area around the Drumheller Penitentiary. Now we'll also have to include the distance I covered to go check out that river crossing. According to Google Maps, it's 23 kilometers and 18 minutes driving time each way. And now for the spreadsheet breakdown. For distance traveled, naturally the Piper Tomahawk covered less ground as it was a more direct path from point A to point B. For fuel burn, since I know the average fuel consumption of my 2008 Chevrolet Avalanche, I've got an estimated fuel burn to cover this trip at just under 81 liters of fuel uh, for a total cost of around $129. Now that's in comparison to the actual fuel burn recorded for the Piper Tomahawk at 16 gallons, which works out to just under 61 liters for a total cost of around $120. For total travel time, I've got it estimated that it would take just over 6 hours to do this trip, including the detour and a 15 minute fuel break for the Chevrolet Avalanche, versus just under 4 hours for the Piper Tomahawk. Now that includes 45 minutes for a fuel stop, pre-flight and calling to book a VFR flight plan, and 3 hours and 12 minutes travel time. Now that travel time includes taxi time, engine run up checks and the climb out, so that is engine start up to shut down for a total savings of just over two hours of time. So there you have it. The clear cut winner by far is the Piper Tomahawk. Not only was it two hours faster, but also burned less fuel and a cheaper quantity of fuel. And at five gallons an hour, you cannot beat that for time building or just having fun. I'm so thankful I bought this Piper Tomahawk. The next step up might've been a four seater, something like that, where I'd usually be flying by myself or with one other person anyway. And at the seven or eight gallons an hour of fuel burn that those would have taken, uh, I'm now banking about $30 an hour into my pocket at today's fuel costs that could go towards future maintenance or upgrades as opposed to just burning it out the exhaust. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this content. Please subscribe. Not only will it support this channel, but you'll also be notified of future episodes as they come out. I plan to make several videos covering topics that range from aircraft ownership or even address topics that maybe if you're thinking about becoming an aircraft owner, that you'll get a lot of value out of these future episodes. So that's it for now. See you on the next one.